So, in the last couple of lectures, what we were looking at was uh, we tried to derive classification rules, classification functions that is partitions of the sample space for a two population problem. We had uh, looked at various concepts like uh, where what happens to when we look at uh, deriving a classification rule when we have got uh, say for example, uh, a rule which tries to minimize the total probability of misclassification. What type of rule do we get when we look at uh, functions like uh, expected cost of misclassification and the partition corresponding to one that would minimize an expected uh, cost of misclassification. We had also seen in the last lecture uh, for specific type of populations namely normal populations uh, and we had seen how these optimum rules actually look like for these special type of cases of multivariate normal populations. So, the first thing that we are going to look at today will be performance measures of various classification uh, functions. So, that gives us some way of comparing various partitions, various classification functions and then we will move on to looking at uh, classification problems in a multi-population problem. Uh, so, we will generalize whatever we have been doing for two population cases, we will look at generalizing that to a general C population problem. Let us start today looking at this performance measures thus, we are looking at performance measures for comparing different classifications. We are looking at comparing, uh, comparing such uh, different classification functions. Let us recall what we had uh, defined earlier. Uh, we had a total probability of misclassification where we are considering still two population problem. So, that was given by P 1. So, it is coming from first population getting misclassified into the second population this plus P 2 times P 1 given to. Now, this in terms of the regions that we have obtained. So, this is integration over the R 2 region. The uh, object is coming from the first population. So, it has got a density like this, this plus P 2 into integral over R 1 and since it is coming from the second population, it has got a density F 2 this term. right? Now, based on this total probability of misclassification, uh, we can look at the following measure which is called the optimum error rate, optimum error rate or OER. Now, that is what is corresponding to the total probability of misclassification uh, rule which minimizes that total probability of misclassification. So, this is what is corresponding to the minimum TPM rule. Now, suppose we have got this TPM minimum uh, optimum TPM rule suppose that is given by this partition R 1 optimum R 2 optimum. So, this gives us the minimum to, uh, total probability of misclassification. Then this O P R expression is given by or O E R rather is given by P 1 into integral over R 2 opt this into F 1 x d x this plus P 2 times integral over this R 1 opt region of the density for the second population F 2 x d x. right? So, this is one such measure for classification. You look at the optimum partitions that you obtain and then calculate what is the total probability of misclassification corresponding to that. Now, note that in this particular uh, situation here when we talk about R 1 opt and R 2 opt these quantities as we had seen in the earlier lectures, they depend on uh, population quantities like unknown mean vector, unknown covariance matrix in case of multivariate normal populations and hence for any practical purposes given the data one uh, based on the learning sample, one would be estimating these quantities and the measure that is based on such quantities is what is called the actual error rate, actual error rate or A E R. Now, this is given by the following expression. 
that instead of writing it as R1 opt and R2 opt, we write it as R2 opt cap that is the estimate of that particular region based on the given sample data which is there in the learning sample. So, this is R1 opt hat F2 x dx. So, this is a measured. Now, this R1 opt R2 opt caps and this R2 opt estimate are based on the learning sample which is which was denoted by L. So, these are based on the learning sample which is say script L. Right. Now, once again if you look carefully at this O E R or A E R, although A E R has got this estimate out here, we still keep it as F 1 x F 2 x. So, these quantities are still unknown. Now, note that O E R or A E R both of these depend on unknown quantities say for example, P 1, P 2 and or as may be the case with O E R or A E R F 1 x F 2 x and hence they as such cannot be applied to compute for a given data what is the OER or AER corresponding to a partition rule. Now, a measure that is defined as an apparent error rate, apparent error rate or APER, this is a measure that is going to be based on the sample data and after the classification has been done, one actually would look at the proportion of misclassifications that is being done based on a such a measure. Now, this is going to be defined as the fraction of observations, fraction of observations in the training sample, because that is what we have in the training sample that are misclassified by the classification rule, classification rule or the classification function. Now, how is that going to be defined? It is based on something which is called a confusion matrix. So, one first constructs the confusion matrix after uh, the classification rule is put forward. So, one has got a first to start with the learning sample based on the learning sample, learning sample the cases are pre classified. Then based on those pre classified cases one has constructed a classification rule. So, the sample classification rule is in place and using the sample classification rule one has classified those pre classified examples which were there in the learning sample and then one looks at this matrix which is called the confusion matrix. it looks like the following. So, we will be having on one hand predicted class memberships. So, there can be two such predicted classes pi 1 and pi 2 because we are still looking at two class problem and each observation what we have has got another tag which is there in the learning sample. So, actual class membership. So, there are two possibilities pi 1 and pi 2. Now, this confusion matrix based on the learning sample that is script L. Right. Now, suppose in this learning sample these are pre classified examples and hence after we use the classification function based on the sample data, when we are going to now classify the uh, feature vectors, we are going to come up with some predicted class memberships. Now, these predicted class memberships are going to lead us to these numbers say this is n 1 c n 1 m. Now, this this n 1 c is the number of observations coming from the first population pi 1 and being correctly classified by the classification rule. So, the predicted class membership is pi 1 
corresponding to those observations coming from the first population. So, N 1 C is the number of correctly classified observations from, uh, in the learning sample coming from the first population. Now, N 1 M is the number of observations that are coming from the first population. They are there in the learning sample and by the classification function they are misclassified into this pi 2 population. So, this is this notation. Now, similarly we can define this as N 2 M. N 2 M is the number of observations which are actually belonging to the second population pi 2 and by the classification function are getting classified into the pi 1 population and hence these numbers uh, of, of this, num this number of observations N 2 M are wrongly classified examples coming from the second population and similar to this one we will have a number N 2 C here which is the number of observations cases coming from the second population and also being classified to belong to the second population using our classification function. Now, the total cardinality of suppose this L learning sample is N, then we will uh, be having this suppose is the sum of these two numbers. So, this is N 1 C plus N 1 M. So, these this N 1 is the number of observations belonging to the first population in the learning set L and this is N 2 which is the number of observations belonging to the second population in the learning set and this is the sum of N 2 C plus N 2 M. Now, if this is what we get as the confusion matrix which is uh, uh, derived when we have a particular classification function in place, then these observations are misclassified coming from the first population and these observations N 2 M are the number of observations misclassified coming from the second population. And hence, when we talk about apparent error rate A P E R, then it is a fraction of observations in the training sample that are misclassified by the classification function. So, this would imply that what we have this A P E R apparent error rate is the fraction of misclassified observations. So, it is N 1 M plus N 2 M these are the observations which are misclassified that divided by N 1 plus N 2. So, this is in a perfectly implementable form. So, based on any classification function and the given learning sample L, one can compute this uh, confusion matrix and hence one can get to this apparent error rate. So, that can be computed for any practical data. So, we end this particular small section on uh, looking at performance measures of um, for comparing classification functions. Now, we look at the important problem of extending what we were trying to learn in classification uh, in terms of looking at a multi class problem. So, let us look at that now. So, we are looking at classification under a multi class setup. So, we have we make provision for more than two populations. Suppose we have got now C populations, suppose pi 1, pi 2, pi C are C populations, C possible populations with prior probabilities of these populations probabilities of these populations as say p pi 1, p pi 2, p pi c. So, the problem is simple that we have got a multivariate normal uh, multivariate in general not in not necessarily normal. We have a multivariate population and wherein in the multivariate population there are C such possible populations. They may differ in their mean vector, they may differ in their covariance matrix or any other measure characterizing that particular uh, population. And then uh, these populations has got these prior probabilities uh, p pi 1, p pi 2, p pi c and given an, a multidimensional observation we will have to look at in which class this is going to belong to. So, we are trying to classify a multivariate observation. Uh, a feature vector into one of these C populations. Now, let us look at the three type of classification rules that one can think of or the type of classification rules that we have derived for two population problem. Let us first look at the Bayes rule. 
Now, the Bayes rule is going to choose that particular population which has got the highest posterior probability. Now, let us write that that we would like to assign an, ob an uh, multivariate observation a multivariate observation x to a particular pi say pi j if the posterior probability if the posterior probability of pi j given this x is the maximum among all the possible populations among all the possible populations. That is what we are trying to do here is that let us denote by this quantity p pi j given x to be the posterior probability of the population pi j given x is observed if this is greater than p pi k given x if this is true for every k equal to 1 2 up to c with k not equal to j then we will assign x the multivariate observation to the population pi j because the posterior probability of pi j given x which is this if that is the maximum among all possible such posterior uh, probabilities for other populations. So, we have got a k which is not equal to k. So, this is basically what we have. Now, this can be written alternatively in the following form that we have got the using Bayes theorem what we can write straight away is that probability of x given pi j this into probability of pi j this divided by summation j equal to 1 2 up to c p x given pi j these are multivariate observations p pi j into this divide multiplied by p pi j. If that is greater than the corresponding quantity on the right hand side. So, this is probability of x given pi k this into the prior probability of pi k that divided by summation j equal to 1 2 up to c p x given pi j this into the prior probability of the jth population. If that is true for every k equal to 1 2 up to c with k not equal to j. So, we have got this to give us the Bayes rule which looks at which population has got the maximum posterior probability given the observation x. So, this is in a nice form that we have got this to be the Bayes rule wherein we can infer that this left hand side here what we have is the posterior probability of pi j given x and the right hand side is the posterior probability of pi k for k not equal to j for all other populations. Now, let us look at the total probability of misclassification approach TPM minimizing classification rule. Now, how is that going to look like in this multi class problem? The total probability of misclassification the type of concept that we had introduced for the multi class problem this will take the following form that it is a summation i equal to 1 2 up to c then probability the a priori probability of the pi i population into the probability of committing an error given an observation is coming from pi i. Let us see what are the terms here because if we are looking at the term by term here. So, the first term is p pi 1 into the probability of classifying that observation which is coming from the first population pi 1 and then putting it into any other population. So, what is this probability of error by the way this probability of error given pi i this is going to be given in terms of the partitions that we have. Suppose we say that 
let R1, R2, Rc be the par classification partition, be the classification partition. That means that if x belongs to Ri, we are going to put it into population number i. That is, for every x that is belonging to this region, the class membership is pi 1. For every x that is belonging to R2, the class membership is going to be pi 2 and for the rest of these also. So, it is basically that. So, we can write this probability of error given an observation is coming from pi 1, uh, pi i here. So, that has got a probability which we had uh, denoted earlier p x given pi j. So, this is the density when we are looking at an observation coming from pi j. Now, this we are actually putting it into some other set here other than the i th set. So, this is i x given pi i and then this is integral over the complementary region of R i, because if x belongs to R i, then we are going to correctly classify it into pi i. Otherwise, if we are having x belonging to any other R i not equal to that particular term for which we are looking at this and hence this term can be written as omega minus this R i. So, this is p x given pi i dx. Now, if this error is given by this particular expression, then this would imply that the total probability of misclassification for this multi class problem expression is given by i equal to 1 2 up to c p pi i into integral of omega minus r i of p x given pi i right. Now, let us see what this term is equal to. This term would be equal to this total probability of misclassification thus is equal to summation i equal to 1 2 up to c p pi i into integral over omega of p x given pi i dx this minus integral over r i of p x given pi i this dx. Now, this expression is equal to 1. So, what we will be having is summation i equal to 1 to c p pi i. This is multiplied by 1 minus integral we leave it as it is. The second term p x given pi i dx. So, the first term that we have here after we open the bracket is summation i equal to 1 to up to c p pi i this minus summation i equal to 1 to up to c p pi i into integral r i p x given pi i to d x. Now, we note that what is this term equal to? The first term in this expression is equal to 1 because it looks at the prior probability the sum of the prior probability of all possible c populations and hence summation of this p pi i terms will be equal to 1. So, it is 1 minus this term here that it is i equal to 1 to c summation p pi i into the term which we have there p x given pi i d x. So, this would imply that the rule or rather minimizing the total probability of misclassification is equivalent to maximizing uh, this expression which is a second expression. So, minimizing total probability of misclassification with respect to the partition R 1, R 2, R C is equivalent to to maximizing the quantity which is summation i equal to 1 to up to c p pi i to integral over r i p x given pi i d x 
this with respect to the partition R1, R2, Rc. Now, the minimi uh, this partition that is going to lead us to minimum total probability of misclassification thus is same as the partition which would maximize the expression which is given by this. Right? Now, what is that? So, the optimizing partition which is going to maximize this particular expression star is going to be that it is going to be the set of all x's for which we will have the corresponding term p pi i into p x given pi i to be the maximum. So, what we have here is finally that the maximization of star, the maximization of star with respect to this r i is obtained if on r i we have the corresponding expression p pi i into p x given pi i to be the maximum. This is so, because we are trying to maximize this particular quantity with respect to r i. So, with respect to each of these r i terms here, we are trying to find out p pi i into p x given pi i if that is maximum then the expression is going to be maximized that is allocation rule is going to be given by the following allocation rule is assign x to pi i if we have p pi i into p x given pi i is maximum for every i equal to 1 to up to c that is if we have got p pi i into p x given pi i to be greater than p pi k into p x given pi k this is true for every k equal to 1 to up to c where k is not equal to i. Right? So, this is what is going to give us a partition that is we have got in other words r i is the region of x's such that this term p pi i into p x given pi i is maximum over all i over all uh, say uh, over all i. So, that is basically what is going to lead us to this particular region and hence if we have this as r i we can construct all the other regions. So, we will be having the optimum partition minimizing the total probability of misclassification. So, this would lead us to this r 1 opt r 2 opt opt in the sense that it is uh, leading us to the partition which is going to be the partition which would minimize the total probability of misclassification. Now, what we observe is the following that when we have obtained this classification rule under the uh, paradigm of uh, say the total probability of misclassification and we had earlier looked at the rule which was looking at the Bayes rule which also was essentially the same. So, for a Bayes rule what we had was this condition this posterior probability to be greater than this posterior probability. However, we have got the both the uh, denominators in the left hand side and the right hand side to be the same and hence it, that is going to have the Bayes rule is going to be based on this expression being greater than the numerator of the right hand side and hence the two rules are basically equivalent because we have got exactly the same rule here. So, this implies the total probability of misclassification minimizing partition or minimizing classification rule is same as the Bayes rule which maximizes the posterior probability.
So, this is another uh, justification of looking at either of these two rules. Now, next we are going to look at classification rule based on ECM, still on a multi class problem. So, we will now look at classification rule or construction of the classification partition based on the expected cost of misclassification. Let us recall the structure that is what we have, we have got pi 1, pi 2, pi c, these are the c populations, c possible populations into which an observation can belong to and then we have got these as the prior probabilities say let us write that is uh, to be equal to p 1, p pi 2 say denote that to be p 2 and uh, p pi c which is the prior probability of the c th population given by p c. So, these are uh, prior probabilities of the populations, the prior probabilities of the populations. We will also say that uh, say for example, uh, this uh, uh, the density of x, the density of x given pi i say is given by f i x, this is for i equal to 1, 2 up to c. In our earlier notation, we had perhaps uh, denoted this by p x given pi i. So, that density uh, we are denoting by f i x's. Now, we have got a multi class problem, a c class problem. So, let us also look at the costs of misclassification structure, cost structure or cost of misclassification structure, cost of misclassification structure. Uh, we define that by c k i. So, this is the cost of misclassifying an observation. misclassifying an observation coming from the ith population that is pi i into the kth population that is pi k. So, we have got this c k i is for i k equal to 1 to up to c. Now, we of course, will be having this term with this c i i that is cost of misclassifying an observation from the pi i into pi i. So, there is no misclassification as such and hence we take this to be equal to 0. This is for every i equal to 1 to up to c. Right? So, once we have uh, this particular term in place, then we will look at constructing the uh, region which is going to look at ECM minimizing rule, but before that we, we, we need to actually define how the ECM rule. Uh, ECM looks like under the present situation. So, this is the type of partition that we are trying to uh, get. So, this is the partition of this our classification. Then we can also have a similar notation as to what we had for a two class problem under a cost structure. So, this is what this is the probability of let me write that this is the probability of an observation from pi i getting misclassified into pi k getting misclassified into the population k that is pi k. Now, what is this equal to p k given i. So, this is going to be the integral over the region r k because we are putting it into the kth population wherein the observation as such is coming from the i th population. So, it has got a density f i x d x. Right? So, we can also see what is p i i equal to. So, this is equal to integral over the region r i f i x d x. So, that you can write this as omega the full space minus union of all other r i's this i, uh, let me write this as k, this i is not equal to k. 
So, you are looking at the complementary region of R i that is omega minus union of all other regions, regions which are other than i of this quantity f i x d x. So, this term the first term would be integral over omega this of f i x d x which is going to be equal to 1 and the next term is over union i not equal to k of these r k regions f i x d x. So, the first term here is going to be equal to 1 and the second term is summation over k equal to 1 to up to c with k not equal to i because we have taken out that r i region from here of these terms here integrals f i x d x. So, these are the quantities which would be required as such to define the expected cost of mass classification. Now, let us build up that expected cost of mass classification in the following way that we first look at the conditional ECM the conditional expected cost of misclassification of an observation x from pi 1 say to pi 2 or pi 3 or any of the other populations that is pi 1, uh, pi 2, pi 3, pi c any of these is going to be given by say ECM 1. So, this is the conditional expected cost of misclassification of an observation x which is coming from pi 1 into any other population other than the first population pi 1. So, what is this going to be equal to? This is going to be equal to the probability uh, the cost say first of all suppose let us consider the case that uh, x is misclassified into pi 2 given it is coming from pi 1. So, what is the cost of that? This is the cost that we are going to incur from the general terminology what we had said was p k i to be I am sorry uh, this c k i the cost of misclassification structure c k i is the cost of misclassifying an observation coming from pi i into pi k and hence here we are looking at an observation coming from pi 1 and we are putting it into pi 2 and hence this is the cost that we are going to incur and what is the probability of misclassifying an observation coming from the first uh, population into the second this is given by p 2 1 where p 2 1 is given by the expression that we have written uh, for a general k i k situation here. So, c 2 1 uh, p 2 1 would in particular be integral over r 2 of f 1 x d x. So, that is how this term is defined. This plus suppose that observation is still from first and then it is classified into the third population. So, what we will be having is C 3 given 1 these are all mutu mutually exclusive cases. So, that we will be having this as the summation the expected cost of misclassification it is the conditional uh, expected cost of misclassification given that it is from 1. So, that this would be given by this term this plus the last term would be in this summation uh, will be C c given 1. So, this is the cth population. So, the, this is the cost of misclassifying an observation from the first population into the cth population this multiplied by the probability of misclassifying this. So, this basically is equal to summation c i 1 into p i 1 summation of i from 2 to up to c. So, this is the ECM 1 term. Now, this ECM 1 is with a probability P 1. This ECM 1. So, the expected cost of misclassification ECM 1 is with probability P 1 because that is the prior probability for the first population. So, if we have this conditional ECM of x from pi 1 getting misclassified into pi 2 or pi 3 or pi c to be given by this uh, the expression that we have written here with a probability p 1 because it is from the first population with a priori probability as p 1. We will have the expected cost of misclassification to be given by the expected cost of misclassification is ECM 1 the conditional one that with a probability p 1 that times 
the expected cost of misclassification condition on the observation coming from the second population would similarly be ECM 2 with a probability P 2 and thus we will have to look at all such conditional probabilities uh, conditional cost of misclassification expected cost of misclassifications which is going to be given by this ECM C for the Cth population. So, we can write these terms without much of a difficulty that this term would be equal to summation i equal to 2 to c what we have written there i given 1 into p i given 1 this plus p 2 would be a term. Now, what would be the type of terms that would be there in this conditional ECM of x from pi 2 that is going to be a similar sum with the sum I will just write it as in the first term here C i given 1 into P i given 1. This summation i is from 1 2 up to C wherein this C is not equal to 2 because we are looking at expected cost of misclassification the conditional expected cost of misclassification of x from 2 and hence this would be the expression when we talk about ECM 2 which is this expression. Now, in a similar manner we can write the other terms. So, the last term would be equal to summation i equal to 1 2 up to c not c because c is going to be left out here. So, this is up to c minus 1 of the terms which are same as what we have in here. So, we can write this ECM under the present multi class situation in the following compact form that this ECM is equal to summation i equal to 1 2 up to c say that is p i times summation k equal to 1 2 up to c where k will not be equal to c of expressions which are C k given i into P k given i that is basically the term that what we have out here. So, the summation is over i for this terms here and then summation over k equal to 1 to c with k not equal to I am sorry k is not equal to i because the outer sum here is i. So, if we have P 1 then this sum k is not equal to 1. So, the summation here for p equal to 1 starts from k equal to 2. If we have i equal to 2 that is p 2 we will be looking at summation over k equal to 1 to c without including k equal to 2 and similarly for the last term if we have here p c then this particular sum would run from k equal to 1 to up to c minus 1. So, in terms of the partitions that we are looking at the classification partition the classification partition which is r 1 r 2 r c minimizing minimizing the expected cost of misclassification expected cost of misclassification as given in st uh, this star 1 here as given in star 1 is given by we are now looking at regions. So, that we will be allocating x to a particular population pi k this there are k uh, c such possible populations k equal to 1 to c for which we will be having the inner sum here that i equal to 1 to c say with i not equal to k because we are looking at this pi k for which we will be having this p i into f i x c k given i is smallest. Why is that so? 
because this particular term if you recall that that p k i is in terms of this and hence this expected cost of misclassification I will just write this expression which should lead one to get to this particular term here which is summation i equal to 1 to c. So, this is the that star 1 expression which is equal to i equal to 1 to c. I will take this p i also inside and write this expression as k equal to 1 to up to c with k not equal to i. So, we will have a p i let me also take it inside. So, we will have an integral here r k f i x d x. So, rather than writing it in this form, I will also take this constants inside the integral. I will write it as p i into c k given i this into f i x d x. So, this is an alternate expression of star 1 in terms of breaking up this particular term here p k i because this p k i here as we have noted earlier this is integral over the region r k of f i x d x and hence this star 1 expression is going to be given by this. Now, if we are now looking at the rule the partition r 1 r 2 r c of the sample space which would lead us to minimizing this particular expression. We will look at choosing that particular region r k such that we will have this term here which is given here to be the smallest among all possible k's and hence this is what is leading us to the region r k that is r k is the region of all x's such that we have got this summation that we had written in the previous slide that i equal to 1 to c i not equal to k of p i f i x into c k i to be the smallest right. That is the expression here which we have is going to be less than the expression for every other k other than the region wherein we have got this k here. So, that is summation i equal to this is the left hand side only this is i equal to 1 to up to c with i not equal to k of the expression p i f i x c k given i if that is less than summation over i equal to 1 to up to c i not equal to j. So, you take out some other term in this sum here and that would be p i f i x c k i. This is for every j equal to 1 to up to c and j is not equal to k. So, we will be looking at all such sums deleting a particular i index i equal to 1 to c and the region r k is going to be the region of all such x's for which this left hand side is less than the right hand side out here. So, this is what is giving us the rule which minimizes the expected cost of misclassification and the allocation rule is what we have written here that to allocate x to pi k if we have got the uh, summation here to be the smallest among all possible such k terms. Now, we will note that this particular rule here under the equal cost setup under the equal cost setup the above classification partition above classification partition reduces to to what if we look at this particular partition here it is that we are going to have this to be smallest. Now, if all the costs of misclassification are same that is under the equal cost setup 
these costs of misclassification is not going to play any role. So, this can be taken outside. So, if we have got equal cost set up the uh, this partition here is going to be reduced to allocating x 2 pi k if we have the summation i equal to 1 to c i not equal to k p i f i x is the smallest. Smallest among all such c summations for which we will be having this i not equal to that particular chosen uh, index there. So, this is what we are going to get if we assume that we have got equal cost structure. Now, when is this going to be smallest? If the term among all the c terms i equal to 1 to c that is taken out is the largest. That is, if we have got the term which is taken out. Now, what is the term which is taken out if we are looking at i equal to 1 to c? It is the term corresponding to k. That is, if we have got p k times f k x to be the maximum. So, if we have got to be the maximum, we are essentially looking at this rule that we are going to allocate x 2 pi k if we have got I said that this p k f k is the maximum that is if you have f p k times f k x this is greater than p j times f j x for every j equal to 1 2 up to c with the j not equal to k. So, we are not looking at that kth product on the right hand side, we are looking at all other c minus 1 products and hence we are looking at this all these c terms and then finding out for which of those c possible products we have got the product to be maximum and then x is going to be assigned to pi k corresponding to the population for which this is going to be the maximum. Now, recall that when we were looking at the total probability of misclassification rule, what was the rule that we had got? Let us look back and see what we had got earlier. When we were looking at the total probability of misclassification rule, we had said that the total probability of misclassification rule is 1 that is going to assign x to pi i if the probability product here like this is greater than this type of probability product for all other products other than i. So, this essentially in terms of our notation we have in the present case denoted this to be equal to p i and we have denoted this to be f i. So, what we were trying to say is that in total probability of misclassification minimizing rule that x is going to be allotted to pi i if p i f i x is the maximum over all possible such i's i equal to 1 to c leaving out that particular i which is on the left hand side. Now, if we look at the expected cost of misclassification minimizing rule which we have derived just now which was this and that under an equal cost setup re was reduced to allocating x to pi k if the sum like this is the smallest or in other words the term which is left out in this particular sum here is the largest that is x was being allocated to pi k if the p k f k x is maximum among all possible such products. So, this would imply that under the equal cost setup, uh, we can just remove this bracket actually, uh, under the equal cost setup this would imply that under the equal cost setup, the ECM minimizing rule is same as that of the TPM minimizing rule. So, this ECM minimizing rule is same 
as the TPM minimizing rule. Well, this is what we expect also because if we consider in the ECM setup, there is no nothing special about the ECM minimization uh, or rather any special structure of the cost is not assumed, then the rule which would minimize the ECM would naturally be same as the rule which would minimize the total probability of misclassification. And hence, we have also uh, seen that that is what is happening that if we take uh, in the ECM minimizing rule the cost structures to be identical without having any special uh, preference about the misclassification costs, then the total probability of misclassification rule can be uh, derived from the ECM minimizing rule. So, we will stop at this particular point in this lecture. In the next lecture, we will first look at uh, some examples of how to apply for a multi class problem this type of concepts of ECM minimizing rule or TPM minimizing rule and then we will talk about some other important concepts in this classification problem. Thank you.